everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm sharing with you a wooden canvas paper collage that I made as a gift and I started out with a cradled wood canvas from Arteza Brands. Uh, you can buy a multiple pack. I think this one is it's either 10 by 10 or 12 by 12. I'm not sure. I think it might be 10 by 10 but I got a pack of like six of them from Arteza and they're having a lot of sales right now, so you guys might want to check them out. I do have an affiliate link below the video for my Arteza affiliates. Uh, I'm not sure it really does much, but if you want to try using that link, you can. It'll take you to the Arteza site, and you can check out and see if they have any sales on these uh, cradled wooden canvases. Really nice for collage because with the regular canvas, which I have used for years and tons of them with my paper painting collages, of course when you put any pressure in the middle of the canvas to put the paper on and make sure that it's sealed down without bubbles, it it squishes, right? Because it's just it's just fabric over over a wood frame and so it's a little bit uh, flexible. <clears throat> Whereas the wooden canvas, not at all flexible. It's a piece of wood and you can hang them in the same way because they're open in the back. So you can just put a push, push pin in your wall and hang it really easy. So I'm starting out with a neutral background on this. When I started this canvas, I wasn't really sure what I was going to use it for. I just wanted to get a background done. So I was putting on some different... Uh, <clears throat> Neutral papers like print and music paper, old music paper, old maps, and then also some tea bags that have been used. And then I, I open them up, take out the used tea, and the, the paper itself is really interesting because it has these random stains on it from the tea. And it's a pretty color. It's, it's almost like a quinacridone gold, which is, of course, a popular paint color for artists. Everyone loves it. It warms everything up. And so this kind of gives the same effect. Also, the tea bag paper is translucent. So I can put it over the other papers and give them kind of a warm glow without taking away the fact that there is interesting ephemera tickets and maps and text but it kind of calms them down like a glaze sort of by putting that that tea paper, <laughs> not that kind of tea paper, the other tea paper with from actual tea bags uh, on there. Although the other kind of tea paper might have an interesting effect too, because I'm sure it would be tr very translucent if you used it for a collage. You know, I'm sure it would. I also had some hand pa painted uh handmade paper that has some some Asian lettering on it that I added. Once this was dry, I sanded the edges to make sure everything was real clean. And uh, often I will collage over the edges of my projects, but on this one I decided to leave the edges uh, just plain. And at the end, I ended up painting them black. So you'll see that there, there's a black frame you know, well, not a frame really, because it's just the edges of the canvas, but it's it's striking to have that black edge all the way around. Although I usually collage them all the way around. I just didn't this time. So then um, I was trying to think of what I wanted to draw or collage paper paint over this. And it's, it's for my son who uh, lives in California. And when I ask him, what would you like for Christmas? What would you like for your birthday? Whatever. He always says, priceless art. <laughs> and what that means to him is some of my artwork. He just, he collects it. It's, it's all over his apartment and he loves it. And that's all he ever asks for. Um, you know, I'm sure there's other things he could use or want, but what he wants from me is some art. And last time I visited, which now seems like so long ago because of our enforced <laughs> uh, quarantine, you know, I haven't been, I haven't seen him in so long, but I was at his house and he said to me, are you hungry? And I said, yeah. 
He says, okay. And then, then 30 minutes later, he comes back with these steamed artichokes with like a homemade remoulade sauce that he made out of spices and oils from his kitchen. And I think this is the first time that at least that I can remember that he's ever cooked anything for me. And it was gourmet. I mean, it was so good. And I have that memory of visiting him. I think the rest of the time that I was there, which wasn't very long, we went out to eat a lot. But this one time he prepared these, these, you know, California fresh artichokes with this delicious sauce for dipping. I mean, when I've, when I serve artichokes when he was a child or when he was living with us, I was just serve it with mayonnaise, <laughs> you know, and he's like making this fancy sauce. So that's the reason I decided to do this drawing and paper painting. It's uh, an artichoke on a plate and uh, that's what I'm going to give him for Christmas. He doesn't watch my channel, so it's fine <laughs> that I've put out this video. He will never see it. Uh, he likes to collect my art, but he doesn't He doesn't watch the videos, I don't think. Or if he does, he never tells me. So, uh, And he's, he's a kid who would open up his presents. I mean, when they get there, he'll open them. He won't wait, wait for Christmas. There's no magic to Christmas. Uh, he's way too analytical for that. He's getting his doctorate in in mathematics. You know, he's uh, he's analytical. He's not emotional or uh, anything like that. But he does like my art, so that's one thing. So I used an actual plate to draw a circle around my my drawing of an artichoke, which I did ink in with uh, my Pentel pocket brush, India ink brush pen. Um, I really like that pen. I really enjoy using it. I like that I can make uh, more artistic marks with it because it is a brush and so I can make very thin swirly marks. I can, I can press down harder and make fatter marks, medium marks. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Plus, of course, it's India ink. So when it's dry, it's permanent. So I did my, my base drawing in graphite, but then, you know, pencil, but then I went over it and it with this, this, uh, Pentel pocket brush. And then, uh, I'd used a tape roll to make an inside circle, which now I feel like is a little bit off center, but <laughs> you know, it's there. And, um, I'm painting it in with some glaze of titanium white mixed with glazing medium and then kind of pushing it back and then I got out some Prussian blue and I'm I added that as a shadow and then I started mixing a little bit of, of um, carbon black with the blue and maybe a little bit of this quinacridone gold that I got out to try to make a shadow color, kind of a gray, a warm gray shadow color. And I'm adding that in and then I use a baby wipe to take it back, I, I, you know, back and forth. Then I start the collage process. I had already picked out a bunch of scraps and pieces of paper that have paint on them. Some of them are gel prints. Some of them are extra paint. Some of them are... Uh, most of them are gel prints, you know, a little bit of stenciling, that type of thing. And I'm gluing those down with Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. Today it is torn paper collage, uh, a little bit more natural looking to tear the paper than to cut it. I do both. I'm not, you know, particular. The colors that I have are greens, teals, and a little bit of lavender. If you look at an artichoke, it actually at the bottom often has a little bit of purpley color coming in through the leaves. When I drove through California on the way to go up to Oregon to see the solar eclipse a few years ago, we did drive through a lot of artichoke fields. <laughs> And I am not sure before that I had ever seen them in their natural state uh, growing up. It's kind of like a, like a bloom, I think. I think the artichoke is the bloom of the plant. I'm not sure. It's just the center part. And we drove through a town, and I can't remember the town it was, but it said it was the artichoke 
capital of the nation or maybe the world. <laughs> I don't know. And also we, we stopped at this little uh, place to eat that was right on the coast, uh, just kind of north of, of Santa Cruz and had fried artichokes like they had fried deep fried them and then they give you a sauce to dip it in and it was so yummy I wished I could have that again I've tried to look up recipes to see if I could figure out how to make it I'm not very good at frying everything that I try to deep fry comes out really oily so I think maybe I don't get the, the oil hot enough or maybe I'm too impatient and I don't leave them in long enough to cook. I'm not sure. I just, I'm not a pro <laughs> at, at deep frying. So if I go back to visit, I will want to go up to that, that little restaurant again sometime. And hopefully they will have the fried artichokes because that's really delicious. I've always liked them. I've always liked artichokes. It's kind of a, a thing that I think maybe not as many people eat but I just like to get them whole and boil them and then pick off the leaves and like eat them. You know, you can kind of scrape them with your bottom teeth and dip them in mayonnaise. I just think that's delicious. So I have all kinds of paper here. It's uh, some of it's deli paper. So I'm using my the pads of my finger to kind of push the deli paper down after I put the glue on, which of course gets my hands covered in glue. But deli paper... Uh, sometimes doesn't want to be flat if you don't really be diligent about making sure that you get the creases out. I also have some uh, bumpy paper, which you can see it on the left. It's got some kind of dark olive green and it's got these little bumps. And I thought I was going to flatten out the bumps, but I ended up having a little bit of bumps here and there when I put that paper on. And it's actually very interesting. Um, of course, in the video, all my paper paintings look flat, but in reality, they do have a lot of texture just because you're just gluing different types of paper onto something flat and you end up getting paper texture. I do try to get all the air bubbles out and make sure that everything's flat in that way, but um, there's still going to be texture because you're, you're putting something on top of something else. Also, even the background, even though I carefully attached all that paper and flattened it out, there still is some texture there too because one piece lays over another piece that's a little bit thicker and you get kind of a ridge. And um, there's just, they're, they're very textural, these paper paintings, just by the nature of collage and um, attaching the paper. So... I know maybe a few of you have seen them in real life, but not very many. <laughs> I've given away a few over the years for, for uh, giveaways and stuff on my channel. But these really complex ones, I usually sell them or give them to family members or friends. Because this is intensive. This... This collage took me about four hours, probably total, to complete um, between all the different steps. I also had drying in between, so it actually took me a few days to make it. But of course, you get all of that really sped up and um, edited, and you don't see the whole long process that this takes. I just love the effect. That's the reason I do it. I could paint this artichoke in a quarter of the time and just paint it with acrylic paint and it would be done. But I love the result of this paper painting style. I just, I saw it up in uh, Sedona, Arizona, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. And ever since then, I've been obsessed with it. I just, I love the way it looks. I, I may be the only one, but I just think it looks really cool. I really like it. So that's the reason I do it. That's the reason I taught myself to do it. Um, 
it's not that much different than painting. You've still got to think about your colors. You've still got to think about your shapes. You have to think about where the shadows are, where the highlights are, and try to uh, use the paper in a way that is very similar to painting. So it's, you know, it's not that different. It's kind of, it's kind of a combination of painting and collage, a hybrid of the two, sort of. Huh. So what are you guys doing for uh, making holiday gifts? Have you made anything? Have you made your own Christmas cards? Have you made other gifts? I would be interested to know what you guys have been doing in your studios this month. You can tell me in the comments below or share pictures in the Art Joy of Sharing Art Community on Facebook. If you haven't joined that, you should. Just remember to make sure to answer the questions that pop up when you ask to join because if you don't ask, answer the questions, then we just have to assume that you are a robot and we can't accept anybody that's not a real person because the whole group's idea is sharing art with others and supporting other people in their creative endeavors. And so we, we want real people, not people who are trying to sell things or trying to spam the group. So that's the reason that we're pretty hardcore about that. So once I was done with the collage, I came back in again with that same Pentel pocket brush pen that I love so much. And I went around the shapes and kind of added some illustration lines. I just think it looks cool. And so that's the reason I did it. A collage purist or a paper painting purist would be like, oh, what are you doing? Don't do that. That's not the point. <laughs> oh, well, it's my art. I can do what I want. <laughs> if I want to make illustration lines with my brush pen, I will. And I did. Uh, I think it looks cool. I like the way it, it brought out some of the patterns and shadows and, and stuff. I also um, did a few little lines around the inside and outside of the plate because now, now the lines on the artichoke are so intense that it needed to have a few little lines around the plate. Not as much, just a little bit. Then I decided what I needed was a little bit more collage. So I added some um, some paper that has some printing on it from, it was, it's actually uh, plants that I used on the gel plate. And it was kind of those same warm colors that I wanted to use. And then I also some text uh, tissue paper and some scribbly text that I do on tissue paper as part of a kind of a journaling process. And then to finish that off, I added some glazing with quinacridone gold, quinacridone nickel azel gold. It's a beautiful color and it's, uh, it's translucent so you can use it as a glaze with a little bit of moisture on your brush. And it just warms stuff up. It just makes things warmer without changing the color of it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. And if you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And turn on your notification bells if you haven't already. And you can pin this on Pinterest or share it on Facebook. All those things help my channel grow by helping other people find my channel. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.